Hey there, how are you doing? Rodrigo here for Textualize and this is the fourth video in our series of building a stopwatch application with Textual. Right in front of you, you have a mock-up of what the application is going to look like. If you've watched the very first video in our series, you already know what it's, what it's going to look like in your terminal, but this is a mock-up. And when you're developing Textual apps, it's actually a good idea to, to draw, to sketch what your application is going to look like because it will make it much easier to actually implement the application and get the, the feel, the look and feel that you're going for. And this is such a sketch, right? And we can see here there's the header and then there's three rows here and each of these rows contains a single stopwatch. And you can see that the stopwatches have a couple of buttons to start, to stop, to reset the stopwatch and also a time display. And now what I want you to think about is the fact that each of these rows is functionally the same, right? It's one, two, three stopwatches, but they're all stopwatches. They all have start buttons. They all have reset buttons. They all have time displays. They all have stop buttons if they're started. They're the same. So in, in, in essence, the stopwatch is a component of our app. It's a component built of components, fine, because it has buttons and pieces of text, but it's still a component, it's a logical component. And so sometimes in your application, it makes sense to combine some built-in widgets, so some widgets that Textual offers, into a more complex widget. Because, for example, a stopwatch isn't a widget in Textual, at least not at the time of recording. And therefore, if you want to create this stopwatch thing, this stopwatch component, it is useful to, to actually make it a widget, make it a more complex widget, because then it will make it easier to interact with it, to use it in your application, to you'll be able to associate the logic of the stopwatch itself inside the implementation of your custom widget, and that will make your application code less cluttered. So it's it's a good idea, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So let me open my code editor. Let me actually let me clean this up. Not very useful. I don't have a lot of vertical spaces, you can see, because the font size is very big. So you don't need to delete these comments. I'm going to get rid of them just so I have more space, more vertical space. So there are, there are a couple of different ways, strictly speaking, there are a couple of different ways in which you could implement your own uh, widgets, but the most common one, and it's going to, to do the trick, the vast, majority, the vast majority of times is, you start by implementing the static widget, and then what you're going to do is you're going to create a class, let's call it stopwatch, because that's going to be your widget, it's a, it's a stopwatch widget, and you inherit from static. Now, when you inherit from a widget, you're creating a widget, all right? And depending on the widget you're inheriting from, you might be able to do some things. And this static widget, it's like, it's almost like a, a blank slate, a clean slate for you to work with, except it does a couple of useful things for you in the background which will make building this stopwatch widget actually very painless. I was about to say painful, but I actually mean painless. So this is going to be pretty much painless. So in order to start, what are we going to do? Well, so let's, let's actually write something here. This is a custom stopwatch widget. Sure. Now, what you can do is inside your custom widgets, you can actually also define a compose method. And this compose method, it serves pretty much the same purpose as the compose method of your stopwatch app. It will tell you what sub widgets go inside your custom widget. In this case, let's take a look at the sketch here. We need four things. So we need the start, the reset and the stop buttons. So that's three buttons and we need a time display. So four sub widgets. So let's start by yielding the three buttons. So we're going to yield a button. Now, don't forget to import your buttons from actual.widgets. 
we're going to yield a button and this is going to be the start button and this string right here it's going to be the label for your button then we yield a button stop we yield a button we yield a button reset and we yield our time display now the thing is the actual does not have a time display widget all right and because in in a couple of videos we're going to be implementing some logic inside our time display the thing the correct thing to do is to also create a custom widget for the time display we're going to inherit from static and for now this time display won't do anything and the time display we can start it off with actually what's the style here colon colon dot okay so zero zero colon zero zero colon zero zero dot zero zero all right so this is going to be our custom time display widget and in a couple of videos you'll see that this is a good thing because we're going to implement a couple of things inside the time display now if you're just starting out it's okay that you you don't have the you can't think enough steps in advance or into the future to realize that this is actually better off as a custom widget but that's fine you could have started with something else here and then at some point realize okay let me just make a custom widget for this that's fine but we just want to, to make life slightly easier for you so if you believe me you'll just go with this uh, custom widget for now which is, which at this point because i'm just inheriting from static without doing anything else it just behaves as a static so it's going to show a static piece of text so how can I see this on the screen? So I have a custom widget here. How can I put it on the screen? Well, a custom widget is still a widget. So you just yield it from your application. You can go ahead and inside your app compose, you can yield your widget. That's fine. And now you can run your application and you'll see a bunch of buttons here and the time display. They're, they're not styled correctly, they're not aligned correctly, but they're there. So, me, personally, this is how I always start with custom widgets. I just throw everything I need inside the Compose, and I see, I see it on the screen, I make sure it's there, and that's how I start. I like to go, I like to do baby steps, one thing at a time. And you can also, you can already yield a bunch of different stopwatches. So if I rerun my app, I can see... A set of buttons and a time display for the first one, a set of buttons and a time display for the second one, and a set of buttons and a time display for the third one. So this is the beginning of your custom widget. Now, that was me just checking my notes. Before we conclude this video, I want to show you just one quick thing. It's going to be a quick win for now so that we can end on a high note and that's going to be styling these buttons here the start and stop button so that they look a bit more interesting so the button widget accepts a an argument called variant and the variant can be one of a set of predefined variants and i wanted to see if it would show up all of the variants here but essentially they will let you style the button accordingly so and this is pretty self-explanatory actually there's a default variant so that's the default there's the error the primary the success and the warning and they're just going to sh uh, change sorry they're going to change the color of the button so the start button let's make it a success button it's going to be green and the variant button let's make it an error button what did i say the stop button let's make it a error button so now if I save this, if I close this mess these messages and if I rerun my application, I can see the start and the stop buttons, they have some color. So this is a slightly more interesting design. Now, we'll stop here for now because this has been quite a lot. So feel free to think about this for a bit, try to maybe yield something different inside the Compose or maybe try to come up with a silly little custom widget for yourself and see if you can make it show up inside your application and in the next videos we're going to keep on building our stopwatch app so i'll see you soon bye